Alright, in this video class I wanted to cover some basic curve editing uh, techniques um, and the different kinds of curves that Alias has. Keep in mind, Alias only has really one kind of curve, this non-uniform rational east line NURBS. Um, you have two basic ways to interact with it, by CVs and by um, whole, or, um, edit points. So I'll start off with that. When we look at some of these other ones, the uh, key point curve, the blend curve, um, they are just like more history on uh, top of it that you know, basically controls those CVs in, in essence. So, all right. So let me start off by um, let me go to the the top view here. Okay, I'm gonna come over here and click right mouse click on the curves tab. Go down and do a new curve. And like I said, the uh, the two basic ways of inputting and also edit is by CVs or by edit points. I would say 99% of the times if I'm going to put something in, I'm going to do it by edit points. Okay, so let's start with that. So edit points, where you click, is where it builds the curve. Every time I click, I get an edit point. It builds the CVs then around it to basically control it. So let me put just a few more points in there. Okay, now if we want to go back and edit this, I'm going to pick this. Now you can pick a curve and say move and remove the whole curve. That's picking an object. But if I want to edit this curve, I can either do it by the CVs or the edit points on the curve. So let me start with CVs. So shift to control, pick CVs, pick one like that. Use the same move tool. So shift to control, uh, middle mouse button move. Remember, don't click on it, click off and drag. So that will do kind of a fine movement. Um, as far as shaping the, the curve and all. This CV controls kind of this area. If I click over here, you can see how another part of the curve highlights. Um, same thing if I go out here. Now, that little endpoint only controls this, not the rest of it. Okay, So that's kind of how CV works. I always say they're the kind of more fine adjustment for working with um, curves and all. Now, go back, pick nothing, pick edit point this time, and I select an edit point which is on the curve. Notice how the whole curve um, highlights because watch what happens when I say move, it's a lot larger movement and you can see it actually influences almost all, sometimes the whole, all the CVs that are on or associated with the curve. Okay, So um, that's kind of a basic difference between editing larger kind of uh, things or if you know you want a curve to go through a certain point you grab the edit point move it I can hold down like the alt key and grid snap with it put it at certain spots come over here a lot of times with these tools you don't have to go back through the transformation to the pick nothing pick edit um, CV at a point whatever you just click on the new one and it deselects and reselects the next one okay so let me put this there there. So, in essence, this is in alias world because it's got to blend through all this. This is not really perfect at this point. Um, and notice how the CV's hanging off and it's got a little bit of a curve to it. If I really wanted this part flat, what I do is pick these CVs. So watch the difference now. I'll come in, I'll pick all oops, CVs. I'll say move. Hold down the alt key, grid snap, and now that part is snapped. So this is flat. Now this got a curve of some. If I want it a little bit flatter, I click on that part and just pull it out. Okay, and I can do something like that. Alright, so that's kind of the basic editing that you find uh, with it. Um, let me do Alt L and get rid of that. Okay. Um, now, let's look at real quickly. So I'll take this out of the way. Key point curves. Like I said, key point curves are kind of cat like. Um, they're great if you're doing some basic construction. What's really nice about them, like I can um, hold down the Alt key, click there and there. That key point in the middle is in the center. So if I need something like that, I can easily use it. Um, here's some of the basic um, kind of setup. So if I wanted to go, actually, that's not what I want. Right there. And if I wanted to get a parallel line, I can do that. So I'll click off of that and start clicking points. Now one thing about key points is you notice as you click on this and work with uh, with this actually let me go do um, a 
regular line tool. So if I start clicking, uh, I guess it's not turned on. Oh, sorry, I'll ignore that comment. All right. So and you know you can do as we saw line, curve, line, curve with this. If you want to be specific about any of these as far as their length or radius, you click on this. You um, right uh, shift and control, right mouse button, do information window. There's this attribute. There you can define the length and the angle. So let's do 300. I'll shorten it up a little bit. Get this over here so you can see it. And we'll do that at 45. Okay. So that's another thing about them. They have this separate little parameter here in the information window that you can go in and um, edit and do things with it. If I go down here and select this one that's the polyline, you see you got a line, an arc, a line, and so forth. Um, you can do some interesting things like that real quick if you need to. Our complement for those two parts. Um, now you got to be careful because if I go in and change the arc um, radius here, uh, so let's make this 50. Um, actually, can't go smaller because of the other constraint. Let me go bigger, 200. Okay. I don't know if you can see it yet. Let me try to put a little bit more in there, 300. See how it's getting a bigger arc, but because of these are constrained, the length and change on those, it's not tangent anymore at these ends. Okay. So that's kind of the, you know, it's it's neat in some ways, but other ways it's just, you know doesn't really do like you expect like a fillet where you would change the size and stuff. Um, now let me show you what I mean by these are still regular curves. If we interact with them through these key points. So if you want to drag one around you can click on that and move the geometry. Do things like that. You can see you can get really out of tangent if you need to. Um, you can grab points like that and move things around and snap those as well uh, with that. Now show you what I mean. So if I go in and grab this one, turn CV and whole lines on. Um, that's probably not a good example. Let me pick this one. It's going to be a lot, so hang on. Turn that one on. See all those little CVs. There's a bunch of edit points in there. If I come at any point and grab one of those CVs and move it around, poof, no more key point. It's now just a regular um, um, edit point curve or regular nerves curve and alias. Okay. So that's kind of my point that they're still regular curves. We just interact with them differently. All right, one more type of curve. Let me get rid of all this. Close that out. Blend curves. These you can do an awful lot with it. We just touched it a little bit. Um, but basically, you put these jacks in. It's kind of like putting it in at points. Um, the difference is you can go back and trim this on for the jack, and then you can use the jack as a way to line things up in the geometry. As you see, you can do some pretty interesting things. Um, oops, let me go to the perspective window here and show you. So, and you can even line these up three dimensionally. Um, well, let me get this. Uh, let's see if I can get this kind of. There we go. So now I can do something like that. Eh, it's still not going to be great. Oh, there it is. Let me pull it up so you can see it. Ooh, come on. Uh, let me just move the, this way. There we go. Now I'm moving in three dimensions. You can see it. So that's a three dimensional um, curve um, You know, with these jacks. So if I click on another one, I jump to another point, and I can use this kind of sculpt it further. Um, these are a actually a lot more about orienting one curve to another curve or another surface. Like I said, we haven't really got a chance to get into a lot of that. That's the continuity stuff. Um, so there's a lot there with it. Um, let me show you this one thing. Let's see if I can actually do this here. We'll see what happens. Now, <coughs> let's say I want to put a circle at the end of this. I want to do like a um, swept surface here. So I'm going to grab the surface tool. Um, I can attach it two different ways. One is just hold down the control key. That does this magnetic snap puts it near it, or, or snaps to the end, okay, um, this orients it that way. Another way is to hold down the control and alt, which is curb snapping, the third option there, click and drag on it, and now I can kind of position anywhere I want on this, okay, and I want to bring it up. Now, one other kind of snapping that I haven't covered a lot, if you hold down the alt key, that's grid snapping, and that's a 
quick way to kind of get this to snap down to the grid um, when doing something like this. So let's just, you know, we'll use that point that looks close to being perpendicular. Okay. And like I said, let's do a quick surface out of this. Um, actually, extrude might work. There you pick that. Okay, go pick the path, and then it builds the surface that way. Do a quick shade with that to show you. Okay. Um, now, let's add a little something to this real quick, just to, another way to look to edit. Let me go to the back view. Um, and let me do this. Let me get rid of the surface real quick. Okay. okay. And what I want to do is make a star shape out of here. Okay. Kind of showed you this at some point. Um, so with adjusting the number of spans, we can do that with a curve as well. I'm just going to double click in here, type 16, okay, hit accept, and what I'm going to do is pick all opposites like that real quick, okay, I will pick that point and that point, so I'm really just picking every other one, it's hard to see it. When I scale it now, you'll see it, alright, there we go. Oops, jump way out here. Alright, so let me do this real quick. Alt L. Alright, now what I want to show you differently this time is I want to use instead of the extrude tool, the rail tool. Set up for one and one. Okay, uh, we looked at this for doing some basic surface construction. Click on that, that's the generation curve. So it's asking me right there to select the generation curve. Now it's selecting the primary rail, click on that, we see it sweeps along that, cool, um, it's set to go along the rail, that's great, that's what I want, so you can see it actually kind of um, offsets, let's do off curve, there we go, puts it back in the center, okay, now what, what else, watch what else you can do here, you got a rotate value, so you can grab this, and now that'll twist as it goes down the path, one full revolution. Hey, I want more. Um, I think it's 1440 is about four, if I remember correctly. Yeah, you're really getting something now. All right. Now, also, we can scale it. Um, let me do larger so you can see this. So, as it goes down this, it's scaling up as well. Um, so, at this end, it's twice as large. Okay. And let's uh, pick nothing right now just to see it. Okay. Off the model just to look at the form. So you can do some really neat kind of geometry with that if you know some of the little ins and outs of these tools. Okay, but once again, that's some basics about um, curves as well. Okay, so we'll finish it for there for today.